we come programmed for secure attachment. It's part of our nervous system. It's part of our brain. It's part of how we relate in the world. It's in us. Why don't we start off by just introducing folks to what attachment theory is and the different attachment styles? I think attachment theory, in a way, is a way that can strengthen and enhance our resiliency, but also our capacity to connect, regulate with each other, it mitigates against PTSD. You have a sort of buffer against post-traumatic stress, even when life bumps hard against you. Secure attachment's biological. We come programmed for secure attachment. It's part of our nervous system, it's part of our brain, it's part of how we relate in the world, it's in us, even when we're little babies in utero and, and when we're born and then forever after. So if you think of it as like a, a solid thing that's there, let's think of this as a piece of paper. We want to laminate this piece of paper as much as we can laminate all that secure attachment experience in our little baby bodies and brains. So it'll help us later in our adult relationships. And then of course, life's going to happen where you get some crinklies, you know, you get some challenges along the way, but if you have secure attachment somewhat laminated from your childhood underneath that, it's easier to recover. It's easier to maybe not get as severe symptoms to begin with. So if there's a big advantage, now here's the cool thing. First of all, biological, it comes with us. We are designed, it's a package deal. It comes with us. So I think about it as we have secure attachment, but of course the crinkles, right? The little crinklies <laughs> can happen. And then things interrupt it, things hurt us. You get stuff on, sort of dumped on top of your natural inherent secure attachment. But if you think of it that way, then we're sort of just unpacking the wounds that might be interfering with our natural functioning. And you know when you're being treated well, right? That's your secure attachment registering. And you know when you're not being treated well, which is also realizing you're something's happened in the relationship that's moving away from secure attachment. So let's talk about secure attachment. I'm throwing this word around a lot. The shortest definition to it to me is attunement, that you have a presence and you're actually able to perceive, not only track what's happening in you, but perceive what's happening in another person and the relational field between you. So you're realizing your impact on the other person and you're realizing the impact on you. So it's a, I think of it as try mindfulness, mindful of yourself, mindful of the other, mindful of the relational dynamic in between. I'm glad that we're stopping for a moment to talk about what secure attachment really means. And I love your uh, rooting it in attunement. I believe that uh, virtually all trauma is relational trauma and all healing of trauma must be relational as well. And what you're saying, which is so critical, is we're designed to be attached. We're designed, I call it being relational. From our earliest days as infants, we uh, seek connection. We are designed to be connected. Study after study is telling us that intimacy and a rich social connection keeps us physically healthy as well as mentally healthy. This is what we're born for. And this is, I believe, the only thing that makes us happy. Uh, I believe, for example, that when we self-medicate in addictive uh, processes, what we're medicating is the pain of not being relational and, and connected. And the essence of the wound of trauma and then our adaptation to that wound is disconnection. I think that rich human authentic connection is what cures us. It's what we're designed for. It's what the human species is about. It is the only thing that will make us happy. And what trauma is, is a disruption in that connection. And what healing is, is a return to that, uh, that connection. It's about relational recovery, not recovery from an addiction or a neurosis, recovery of that state of relationality that is our birthright. So that's what I call relationality and I think what you call secure attachment. Beautiful, beautiful, thank you. Uh, I think I'll just give you a little quick overview of secure attachment and as I'm talking about these things that we could use as descriptors just to, I think they're helpful because then we can think about, well, gee, I do really well with that. Or, oh, hmm, I need to practice that one a little bit more. So, and you can think about as I'm talking, who in your life represents 
secure attachment or relationality that that works really well. And just to notice how that impacts you, how your body feels, how you, you feel open hearted, you feel warmer or, you know, whatever your response to that is, just to bring it a little bit more into the experiential range. My mom used to say this to me all the time. You have a roof over your head. What are you complaining about? Well, you know, it is nice to have a roof over your head, but secure attachment's a lot more than a roof over your head and three meals a day and trips to the doctor. It is so much about really uh, emphasizing connection that like Terry was talking about. So even as an infant, the skin to skin contact, right when you're born and hopefully throughout your infancy and later as is age appropriate in your life and a, a reasonable safe haven, right? That, that when you're scared as a little one, you have somebody to run to that protects you or helps you out. Now, safety isn't the only goal though. As you have a safe haven, you basically have a base then as age as you grow up to in an age appropriate way, go out into the world and explore, take risks, um, make your contribution to humanity that you were born to do. It gives you sort of a base to spring off of, to go out and take risks and do things that you know are challenging and difficult and you know, mature yourself and all of that. So safety, I think of as it's important, but it's also mainly foundational and um, that, you, that you feel a reasonable relaxation in the relational field with your mom, your dad, later, your partners, your kids, your friends. Um, these are signals of secure attachment functioning. Connections, highly regulating. So when you're with somebody that's regulating, your body just wants to be with them. So it's, it's great if like somebody's coming home from work at the end of the day, if they've been out, out doing doing their thing, um, that you kind of drop what you're doing, you meet them, you, you, you have a full body hug, and you stay in that hug until you are regulating each other's bodies. That's a really sort of glue for the attachment system loves that. Um, so we're just looking at things that enhance secure attachment, or you could call it relationality. They're just two different windows looking at the same thing. Um, other things are uh, being present, just showing up like really being there in a present attuned way with your partner, your kids or yourself um, or other people. Other things that are really important is your ability to repair. Like we know when we kind of screw up, we're a little abrupt. I mean, we're not perfect. Nobody's supposed to be perfect. But if you learn the capacity to repair um, when something goes a little off, you know, you're working things out in a way, in an ongoing way. And John Gottman's studies on adult couples is that if you can learn to receive and initiate repair, you have an 85% chance of a sustainable well being in your relationship. So, hey, that's all you take out away from today is practice repair. Maybe there's somebody that's been trying to repair with you be a little easy on them. Maybe they're not doing it perfectly, but receive the repair if you can or initiate a repair. That would be great uh, practice if you decide to take that on, if, if you feel like that's you're drawn to doing that. And even if the other person doesn't receive your repair attempt, like you're trying to apologize and they sort of you know, shut you down, um, you're still learning that capacity. The win is still there for you. You're maturing yourself. So it's easier the next time. So I really, really want to emphasize repair. So there's other elements to it, but those give you some of the, the major ones. Also, another one that's really inexpensive and really helpful is a beam gleam, like having a look in your eye towards the people you care about that you appreciate them, or maybe they're your partner, you love them, or your kids, you love them, or they're special to you in some way. We can send that beam gleam from our eyes to another person's eyes across a crowded room, like be there at a party and they're with a different set of friends. You can just shoot them a beam gleam and it just connects, it connects you. And it's inexpensive and easy to do and really helps the attachment system stay connected. You can even think about this for a moment, like imagining looking out into the world and seeing kind eyes looking back at you and just notice how that impacts you on the receiving end. Just imagining maybe somebody in a movie, maybe it's your, one of your relatives, maybe it's the Dalai Lama or some spiritual leader, maybe it's your dog, doesn't matter. Just imagining looking out into the world and seeing kind eyes, I'm doing it with you. And then just noticing how that affects you. And then also see the second step to this is letting yourself take it in, like actually receive it in your eyes and in your body and how that might affect you. Now, anytime we're doing a corrective experience, it might also bring up the wound of, of looking out in the world and remembering, because this was true in my history, remembering seeing hateful looks. My mom was unhappy, angry a lot. So when I looked out, when I first started doing this, I would see her eyes and I would see this sort of anger rejection look. So that was actually painful and the wound would get exposed, but we kind of need to do both. We need to allow the wound to surface 
and stay present with it and hopefully have support. Just letting myself move through that memory and let that dissipate eventually as I stayed with it and did the you know correct work around it. Now I can look out and I can see I kindness without any of the wound coming up. So sometimes it's a process. But here's the thing. The goal, it's not to find a label like, oh, I'm this or I'm that. The goal is to look at the specific wound and see if we can address that more directly and then that initiates a movement back to secure attachment or back to connection or back to relationality. So our goal is all the same. We're trying to tap into that inherent capacity for connection. connection. And like I had to do with the what, the eye gaze for myself, sort of move through the wound part of that, do the healing I needed to do in relationship around that. And then I could, now I feel like I'm more in a secure attachment relationship with eye gaze. So it takes some time sometimes, but we can get there because we're, it's an innate part of us. Uh, so this is something I just really want to underscore. It's a very hopeful message.